Your cardiovascular system is extremely complex in its functioning and in its composition, but what you need to consider is that you already know a lot about how your cardiovascular system works. What we want to show you is first, let's start with blood. We have talked before that blood is connective tissue. It's connecting everything in your body. We are looking at how it's going to move around and connect everything, delivering nutrients, picking up waste throughout your entire body. So that's going to depend on your heart, your blood vessels, and your blood itself. On average, we look at your cardiovascular system dealing with waste and delivery of nutrients to over 10 trillion cells every single day. The blood itself looks at moving these nutrients and these waste products as efficiently and as safely as possible. So in all, you have about four to six liters of blood in your, in your body, depending on how big you are. It roughly sits at about 38 degrees C or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly your body temperature. pH, pretty close to neutral. We do look at it being about five times more viscous than water, meaning we're in the range of a good thick maple syrup. Why is it thick? There's a lot of water. 55% of it is plasma, and plasma is almost entirely water. Plasma is 92% water. So a lot of it is water. But these formed elements, the other 45% of the blood, cells, cell fragments, proteins, fats, it's got so much stuff in it that it's hard to not be thicker than water when you're carrying all of these all of these components. Breaks down, like we said, with plasma, mostly water, but plasma is also going to contain proteins and ions and nutrients and waste, hormones that we'll get to later on. And this is also where we'll see our respiratory gases a lot, O2, CO2. Now, Yes, some of those gases are going to be carried by hemoglobin in your red blood cells that would be part of the cellular elements or cellular components, but we do look at some of the oxygen carbon dioxide just simply being carried in your plasma as well. Red blood cells, number per microliter of blood, microliter, little tiny, right? Microliter is 10 to the minus six liters very, very small amount, but we look at red blood cells being on the order of five to six million. White blood cells, only five to 10,000. When do you think that number might change? Sure, if, you're, if you are sick, if you have an infection, that white blood cell number will go up, but we wanna deal with that quickly Right, get that infection under control. Platelets, you know, quarter to half a million, basically, primarily associated with blood clotting, and we'll look at those later. Notice the basic shapes. Red blood cells, round. White blood cells, basically round, but we're going to see that they're kind of globby later on. And platelets, well, look at this. Platelets are kind of whatever size and shape they need to be to help you clot blood. These will essentially act like an internal Band-Aid. So we're going to need some variability in those. The formed elements of your blood, the, the oxygen, carbon dioxide will be carried, as we said, on the white blood cells and looking at the hemoglobin constituents of that. We do look at these formed elements that we mentioned, so the blood cells, actually being formed through a process known as hemipoiesis, and this is just the production of blood cells in your bone marrow. 
So when we talk skeletal system, we'll have to look at where this is actually coming from. But for now, suffice to say that it's coming from your bone marrow. Your red blood cells, or, or the erythrocytes, are a large portion, as we saw, of the total formed elements in your body. And of all of them, of all the cells in your body, they make up about a third of every single cell in your body. Huge amounts of hemoglobin we've talked about before. Iron is what makes your blood red, so that's the, the red blood cell. And then, because there are so many of them, all of your blood looks red, not just the red blood cells. Mature red blood cells actually lack a nucleus and many of their other organelles. By getting rid of these, these organelles, we increase the surface area for oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. And because blood cells do not divide, they are dependent on the bone marrow to make more of themselves. They don't need those organelles. You make about 180 million new red blood cells every minute. So because as mature red blood cells, they lack a nucleus, they have this concave appearance. On a slide, they almost look kind of hollow in the middle, right? This is because the middle is actually squishing together. The only materials that we have are around the outside. That would be all of the hemoglobin and so on. White blood cells, or leukocytes, not as numerous. We hope not. Uh, we only see more of them if you have some sort of infection. And we mostly find them in your tissues, not circulating in your blood, because they're keeping the tissues clean. We've talked before that they engulf pathogens through phagocytosis, so they clean up bacteria, they clean up cell debris, and they're going to be moving around and squeezing in between cells and blood vessel walls all day long, trying to make sure that your body is nice and cleaned up. And when I said they look kind of globby, this is what I mean. They've got all of these projections that turn into pseudopodia or false feet that help them move around, help them surround and engulf bacteria and other things that need to be taken care of. Now in our slide here, we've actually stained the DNA purple, so you see that these guys do actually have a nucleus, okay? So for these cells, a nucleus is going to be important. Many proteins are going to have to be made to help this cell combat any infections. So it's going to need to maintain its nucleus. You see here reaching out and surrounding bacteria, reaching out, that whole idea of the pseudopodia helping with this process. Platelets, we said, are going to be involved in clotting. We look at these as being very squishy and able to actually clump together. We want them to clump together so that they're going to keep you from bleeding out. So a clot stops bleeding if it's being used in an injury sort of sense. What we do worry about is clotting that would occur just in your bloodstream, and we'll talk about that more later on. But they block, or they come together in these clumps, and you see that there's a whole lot of kind of sticky looking stuff that comes along with them. We'll look at these. These are proteins that are actually produced by the platelets that help clot and help form structures for you that will protect you. Can you identify the cells here? So the plasma, we said, was about 92% water, meaning that 8% of it, roughly, is dissolved materials and other proteins. Interstitial fluid, this is a term we will see later on, is actually plasma that, that seeps out of the tissues or gets squeezed out that is almost all water. So I have here for you that it's not rich in proteins. This interstitial fluid is fluid between your tissues.
The proteins themselves come in three major classes, albumins, which are a lot of them, made in your liver and help to transport hormones and fatty acids. Fibrinogen, again, made in the liver, and this one is the one that's associated with blood clotting. So when we look at these, the fibrinogen is going to set down essentially a matrix of this fibrin that's going to essentially be the framework onto which the platelets will then attach. So when we look at the platelets then coming in and adhering to this framework, you would literally get an internal Band-Aid. And when we look at fibrinogen, this fluid that's left behind after all this happens is called serum. So if you've ever put on a Band-Aid and you take it off after you've injured yourself, you take off the Band-Aid and there's no blood on it really, but there's kind of a yellow oozy sort of substance on the Band-Aid, that's serum. That's what's actually squeezed out as your body has started to heal itself. Globulins are about a third of your plasma proteins, again, made by the liver. All of the plasma proteins are made in your liver. There are two big types, immunoglobulins and transport proteins. You have seen transport proteins before, lipoproteins or fat-based proteins. Immu um, immunoglobulins or antibodies are going to be involved in, of course, defense and immunity for you. Other things, less than 1% of your blood is electrolytes, sodium chloride, and so on. Some of the organic nutrients, so some of the monomers that we see with our macromolecules, and then organic waste, things like urea that's got to be excreted by the kidneys, so it becomes a filtering, um, a delivery system for filtering and getting rid of waste.